everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So it might look as if we're going to start a cookery lesson today, but we're not. We're going to be talking about yellow. And uh, the point of this is yellow is actually uh, a lovely color and uh, it can be quite difficult to use because people get stuck on the whole um, idea of shadows and how to do shadows on yellow without making it look muddy and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> I was um, planning to um, Go through the whole process today and the goal is to paint a lovely picture sooner or later quite soon rather than too late um, we're going to do something like this which is i'm sure you've seen this kind of painting on on the internet frequently it's a quite a common theme a sprig of lemon tree um, a couple of years ago we were in spain and um we had this in the garden. This is not something you see when you live in Kent or, or Finisterre, um, but in Spain, of course, and in lots of parts of America, it's all over the place. Lots of beautiful lemon trees and orange trees and everything, and I miss that a lot now that we can't go to Spain anymore, but never mind. Um, and one of the paintings I did there was this one, which was um, constructed from various elements that I saw around me outside the house where we were staying. Um, I never stick to the actual original um, photograph, I always veer a long way off track. Um, and so I thought I would do that as well, but not straight away. First of all, we're going to talk about yellow. Um, I've been playing with some yellows in my sketch pad, sketch pad this morning. And um, I'm going to show you in a minute how to do a loose warm up exercise, um, which will get you um, in the flow, so to speak, using water as the medium and you know just generally getting getting the idea now this is my selection of yellows that i have in tubes <clears throat> and i thought i would just show them to you um, so we can talk about yellow for a bit and that might be helpful and what i'm going to use is i'm going to choose four colors four yellows um, and then and also probably a mauve but I'm going to say why these things are useful and why they're not in a second when I've sorted out what I've got here. That's white, that's not relevant. Okay, so this is quinacridone gold, which I am using at the moment, the Schmincke version. This is a synthetic yellow color, which is very bright. And it's this one here. Um, it works very well in lots of situations and in this particular case it works very well as shadow on the lemon. This is quinacridone gold here and so that is going to be one of my choices. Along with Scheveningen lemon yellow and you could use cadmium yellow, sorry cadmium lemon which um, is the same basically as this. This is the old Holland colour and um, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of that out to make sure I've got the right one. And you can see that's a much more acidic shade, much more lemony. And that's what we're going to use when we do the lemons. We'll use that for the body of the lemon. So that's this one. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, asthma. Uh, okay, so that's that. Then the other colors I've got here, we've got um, transparent yellow. We've got Scheveningen and yellow medium. I've got Naples yellow and I've got yellow ochre and uh, another Naples yellow. And I'm going to tell you why you won't use these colors. Um, we will use Scheveningen and yellow medium, which is the same as cadmium yellow, not cadmium lemon. That's this one here, which is this one. And that looks like that, or that. Cadmium yellow, Scheveningen yellow. 
um, and then a transparent yellow which is this one and that's just exactly what it says it is it's got no body in it at all and it looks like that when you squeeze it out of the tube but when you dilute it you'll see that it's a very light colour, it's very totally transparent unlike the cadmium colours which have got a little bit of body in them so we really definitely need that. Now what you don't want to use because it won't give you the same effect at all and you probably have this in your kit either in little pans or in tubes is yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is not suitable, I don't think, for painting uh, lemons and that's because it's basically brown and in my opinion that should never go anywhere near a lemon. Other people might disagree with me but if I want that kind of tone I'm going to go for quinacridone gold and you, you probably can see the quinacridone is transparent and the yellow ochre is more opaque and it's a landscape colour in my point, in my view, yellow ochre, very useful in the right place. The right place is not on a lemon. And uh, the other colour that uh, we won't use for a similar reason is Naples yellow, which again is a very useful colour, but it's not um, suitable for the way we're going to paint lemons. This is Naples yellow, which is a very high, very, very high proportion of white. It's opaque. It's not suitable at all for this particular method of painting lemons. Doesn't mean to say you couldn't use it for a different method, but uh, we're not going to. So don't use yellow ochre, don't use Naples yellow. This one's even, even worse. This is interesting because that is Naples yellow from um, Windsor & Newton. This is Naples yellow from Schmincke. And <laughs> Makes me think of makeup. Look how opaque that is. It goes right over the painting. So you don't want to use that unless you want to cover something up. You might be able to use it usefully if you had a, an error that you couldn't otherwise correct. But um, I haven't, I bought that. I thought it was going to be useful, but I'm not sure I'm ever going to use it. It looks too much like foundation to me. Could probably put that on my face cover up some of the lines um, and then another color that we might conceivably use but we will definitely use when we come to doing the oranges this is uh, cadmium yellow deep now the reason I'm mentioning this is because it says on it this is actually gouache but it could just as easily be watercolor it says cadmium yellow deep well I don't know about you but I don't think that's a yellow so don't be deceived by that. Cadmium Yellow Deep is actually orange. <laughs> so that one we won't be using for the lemons, but as I say, we might use it for um, oranges. And I've got Chevening and Orange here as well, which same thing, this is a transparent version. And look how wonderfully um, uh, transparent that is. That's absolutely marvelous. And that would be great for the oranges and um, so but not really for the lemons although you might want to add a touch of it into the leaves maybe okay oh and here we have another example because um, it's very interesting to compare different manufacturers um, versions of colors this is quinacridone gold and you remember how I said how it was lovely and uh, transparent even now that um, quinacridone gold has to be made from a mixture of other pigments because the original pigment that was made 30 years ago for painting cars ran out a few years back and um, for some reason they can't make it anymore I don't know why it must be illegal and so they're now having to mix it from two other colors and it's not as good as it used to be, but it's okay. But this is also called quinacridone gold. It's by a company called Rosa. 
and um, I bought this one. I couldn't get hold of the other one because, as I say, it had run out. And um, it's just now tell me that that's not completely different to that, and yet it's got the same name. They call this quinacridone gold. It's semi opaque, this one, it's more orange. It doesn't bear any resemblance to the Schmincke Quinacridone Gold. So if you come across this brand, Rosa, watercolour, it is cheap, it is Russian, it is bad. Avoid it at all costs. So there we are. So this lot here is going back into my drawer. In there. And I will, uh, so these I've got out already, put the lemons to one side there. Um, Quinacridone gold, lemon yellow, cup of tea, sorry, you over there. Um, Chevening yellow medium, that's lemon yellow again. That's transparent gold, transparent yellow, um, which I've put away. Okay, so that's transparent. I have to try and remember that. And this is sap green, which we'll need. And that's another bit of quinacridone gold there. So I'm going to stick that there. Stick that there. Okay, so I'll put my uh, colour swatches to one side there. And um, so this is a piece of doodle art, I suppose you could call it. Um, and the idea of this as a practice piece is to allow water and paint to flow and mingle. So I just need to get a piece of paper, just a second. And for this, I'm going to use um, my Rigger brush, if I can find it. Well, this is a sword liner, which when it's wet, has a sword, swordish kind of look to it. And I'm going to use a um, toothbrush, one of my new ones. And I'm going to use a Spray bottle, small, probably. Where is it? Dun, 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 dun. Oh well, I'll use the big one then instead. I can't find the small one. And I'm going to just put some water. Oops. In opposite corners on this piece of paper. And then I'm going to take a biggish kind of brush. This is a 14. Excuse me while I have a quick slow of tea. And I'm going to, starting with the lemon yellow, just drop in some, some lemon yellow both sides and then I'm going to pick up some um, chevening and yellow cadmium yellow and drop that in and some oops some chevening and sorry some um, quinacridone gold and in my original here, I used uh, pink, but for this one, I'm going to use the gold because we're sticking to the colors of the yellow tones. So I'm just generally sort of splash that about a bit, clean off the brush. And then just melt away some of the edges a little bit so that the paint can flow. And then I'm going 
going to pick up my, I'm going to do it with the toothbrush, just spray a few extra bits like that. And then um, I think I did this with olive green before and I think I might use olive green again. rather than the sap green because I want to be able to pick it up from the pan, from the pot, from the dish without mixing it with anything really. Yeah, I think that's what I used. So we're just going to play with some lines. And as you do this, you can see how when the paint hits the wet bits, it goes fuzzy. Oops, oh dear, there seems to be a dead fly. So then I might put a few leaves in and you could wait for this to dry and then you could put the leaves where the bits have run there. You could do that. I probably should. And then put some more leaves over down here. But in the meantime, I should put some more colour. And maybe I will come in with a little bit of burnt sienna, which is stronger than um, quinacridone gold. Remembering this is abstract, okay? So when you're doing it, when I do abstract work, I put the colors where I just feel they want to go. If you use paint really thick, you get a slightly different effect. Now I need to leave it to dry just a little bit. And I can, if, if you feel you've gone a little bit too heavy handed, you can always, as I have said before, dab a little bit of the paint off if you don't like the effect. At this point you can correct. It will run a lot. So, And the thing is we're not trying to create a masterpiece here, we are literally just playing with paint, trying to see what happens, see how it runs in these interesting patterns and so on. Okay, so it's faded down quite a lot in the drying process. And uh, now I'm going to come in and um, add to the lines a little bit.
This is good practice for using a rigger or a uh, sword liner. They're very useful brushes for doing branches on trees. But they do take a little bit of practice um, getting used to the way they work and how you can get the lines by pressing down and lifting up and flicking and turning, changing direction. And they're also very good for spattering as well. And for drawing like thin lines down the center of a leaf or something like that. So this is really good practice. And you can, uh, yeah. So we might bring, like I did in the previous one, bring a branch down here and let the lines overlap. If you don't have one of these brushes, um, I, I will put a link in the description below the video. And they really are, it's very useful if you, if you ever do landscape and we will use it when we do the, um, the lemon tree, which we're going to do soon, uh, later on in the week. We will actually use these techniques that I'm showing you now in order to do the lemon tree. I think that's probably enough twigs to be going on with. So now I'm going to just pick up my biggish brush and um, I'm going to mix some olive green with some quinacridone gold. And then I'm going to put in a few extra leaves. Um, Maybe I'll drop some of this colour in here, just to see what it does. When you're doing this kind of thing, try to make sure that you leave some areas lighter, like we've got this diagonal line going here and there's a lighter area here and here, and sometimes you don't want to interfere, so you're going to keep the design part of it. Um, over here, let's say. So we've got, that's where our main clump of leaves is. And this is a sort of flower here with maybe some kind of leaves behind it. Okay, well, I think that's enough of that to be going on with. I'm just going to pick up a bit of green and do a flick like that. To duck for that. And then we'll let that dry. And uh, I will try to resist the temptation to keep on playing. And I will let you go. Please give this video a like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get to hear whenever anything new comes up. Thanks very much for all the lovely comments that everybody's leaving and please continue to do so because it's marvellous. And um, yeah, I will see you all tomorrow. So I'll say bye bye for now. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.